Canada's big six banks dropped their Q4 results, and it is not all good. Holy banana bread, let's do this. The fiscal year for the banks ended at the end of October, and the results for their final quarter are now in. This is very much a hit and miss story, as some of our favorites continue to shine, while some, well, not so much. How did the bank you are invested in fare? We're going to find that out in just a moment. Before we open some bank accounts, tell me in the comments if you are invested in any of Canada's big six banks. I am always grateful when you drop in on the home of free financial content on YouTube. While you are here, please subscribe as you don't want to miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. Today's list is going to be very different than most of the lists you have seen on this channel in the past. This is all about earnings, so we are not worried about market caps or beta values. I can assure you, banks have nice betas. Without any further ado, let's do this. Up first, we will start with Toronto Dominion Bank, who has a ticker of TD. TD is one of those banks that has made the most out of rising interest rates. When rates go up, typically banks make much more on their loans compared to the little bit extra they pay out for, well, increased interest rates on deposits. Let's start with their revenue. In Q4, TD reported a revenue of $22.6 billion. $7.63 billion of that was interest income. If we remove their expenses from the equation, we are left with a net income of $6.67 billion. That means they have a profit margin of 28.48%. That is not too shabby. Going into this report, the analysts had estimated a profit per share of $2.05. Beat that estimate by 6.29% and came in with a profit of $2.18. TD has really positioned themselves well to take advantage of the raising rate hikes, and that really bodes well for them in 2023. Up next, we have the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, CIBC, with a ticker of CM. CIBC did struggle a little in Q4 as their credit losses rose higher than they had priced in. Despite some of their woes, they still took the initiative to bump up their dividends from 83 cents to 85 cents. Starting with their revenue, in Q4, CIBC reported a revenue of $10.36 billion. If we remove their expenses from that, we are left with a net income of $1.18 billion. That, of course, means they have a profit margin of 11.37%. They did lose $436 million in credit losses in that quarter. And just, just to put that into perspective, last year in Q4, they only lost $78 million. As analysts headed into this report, they had estimated a profit per share of $1.7 CIBC did miss that estimate by 19.38% and they came in with a profit of $1.39. CIBC is a blue chip company and they will be back to meeting expectations sooner than, well, sooner than later. A miss this time, but hardly an out. Up next, we have the Bank of Montreal with a ticker of BMO. BMO has a lot of investment products, and with the bear market and drops in a lot of these assets, some of that downside translated into their earnings this quarter. Starting with their revenue, in Q4, BMO reported a revenue of $15.81 billion. If we take out their expenses from that, we are left with a net income of $4.48 billion. That means they have a profit margin of 28.35%, and that that's actually not bad at all. Going into this report, the analyst had estimated a profit per share of $3.07. BMO just missed that estimate by 0.98% as they came in at, well, a profit of $3.04. BMO may have slightly missed estimates, but they are rock solid. And once the bear market lets up even a wee bit, BMO will be beating those expectations once again. Up next, we have National Bank with a ticker of an A. National Bank did struggle a little in Q4 as their overall income from their financial markets dropped a bit. Trading revenue was, well, it was down for them. Like CIBC, they also decided to increase their dividend. In fact, they did it a little bit better than CIBC as they rose it from 92 to 97 cents. Starting with their revenue. In Q4, National Bank reported a revenue of $4.29 billion. If we remove their expenses from that, we are left with a net income of $738 million. Million. That means they have a profit margin of 17.19%. Going into this report, the analysts had estimated a profit per share of $2.24. They did miss that estimate by 6.99% because they came in with a profit of $2.08. National Bank will get back on track as the market improves, and they may be the smallest bank in the big six, but they are still blue chip and they're not going anywhere. 
Up next, we have Scotiabank with a ticker of BNS. BNS has the story of a lot of one-time expenses that came up in the quarter, and that amounted to roughly $500 million that they don't normally pay out. Despite their overall picture, their overseas banking did pretty good, and they still had a small surprise in the end of their results. Starting with their revenue. In Q4, BNS reported a revenue of $14.20 billion. If we remove their expenses from that, we are left with a net income of $2.06 billion, that means they have a profit margin of 14.47%. As we headed into this report, the analysts had estimated a profit per share of $2. CIBC beat that estimate by 3.13%, and they came in with a profit of $2.06. BNS did beat estimates, and with the one-time expenses out of the way, they can expect more of the same in 2023. BNS is a stock I am pretty excited for. Finally, we have the Royal Bank of Canada with a ticker of RY. Royal Bank had a good quarter, and much like TD, they were positioned positioned well to make good profits over rising interest rates. In fact, they agreed to buy HSBC, which is the seventh largest bank in Canada. This will give them a better presence on the West Coast, as well as open some really good trade connections into Asia. Starting with their revenue, in Q4, Royal Bank reported a revenue of $20.89 billion. If we remove their expenses from that, we are left with a net income of $3.88 billion. That means that they have a profit margin of 18.5 percent Going into this report, the analysts had estimated a profit per share of $2.69. Royal Bank beat that estimate by 2.03% and came in with a profit of $2.74. Royal Bank is a massive bank, and the purchase of HSBC will only strengthen their position within the big six. Canada's big six are all good long-term investments, and with the current bear market, the prices are more than affordable with better dividend yields. When the bulls return to town, these are yields you may never see again on these blue chippers. The fun does not have to end here. Check out my video on railroad investing that I will link on the left. Otherwise, check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you might like a little bit more. Your click will decide who is right, and I will see you in the next video.